party started. So, Steve, um, could you tell the people watching uh, what you do for a business? What I do for a business? Well, uh, as you very eloquently introduced me on your video and on your page, I'm on a mission to help improve the success rate of small business. Um, what I found, I'm in my 36th year of business now, and I've been networking for over three decades. There you go. Some people moan about it, but it's been quite a while. You don't look old enough. One of the things, <laughs> you're very kind, you're very kind. Uh, one of the things I've discovered is that an awful lot of businesses fail. Um, and sometimes very good, very deserving businesses fail. I've known people who've lost homes, who've lost uh, lots of money, who've lost their spouses, and worst of all, people who've lost hope. And actually on the outside looking in, I think it's largely unnecessary. The most common reason that businesses go out of business, they actually coin it as a cash flow issue. And what that means to you and me is not enough business coming in, which tends to mean probably they're not marketing, they're not selling, That you know, all of those things that you and I perhaps take for granted that we do and have been doing for, for decades, um, you know, people struggle with. Most people who set up a business are Michael Gerber in the, the book, The E-Myth, which is a brilliant book um, for any business owner. But he sort of introduced to the concept of we have entrepreneurs, managers and technicians. And when he said, which kind of person starts the most businesses, most people think it's the entrepreneurs actually they account for two or three percent. Oh, 90 percent are technicians. So people who do the job. So yes. the plumber who gets fed up working for somebody else and goes off and starts doing it for himself. Yeah. And most of these people who start businesses have no idea how to run a business. And that's, for me, the biggest challenge. So I want to work with people who, you know, whose business isn't going the way they'd like it to when they first thought they were going to set up or they're new and they want to get a bit of guidance in the first place and you know my mission is to help them build the business that they dreamt of rather than is it hmrc tells us that 85 percent of smes are either struggling to make a living and keep their head above water or are actually losing money yeah 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 so um so obviously you you know so you watched this happen you watched these these businesses you saw they were here today gone tomorrow um and obviously that gave you the kind of reason to kind of be the, i suppose the superhero for those people around you that you could support so i mean where did it start where was the, where was that first moment where, where you said this is what i'm gonna do I, you know i thought about it for too long this is what i'm gonna do what was the inspiration to kind of the, the catalyst of you game right? Um, I don't know that there was a specific catalyst. I, I started working for myself in 1986. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, so quite a long time ago. And the reason I did it is, is I got fed up with corporate politics and messing around. Yeah. You know, I was in a, in a role. I did very well. Um, the organization set up a completely new kind of role that had never existed before. So they set up a pay plan that was going to give me a certain amount of money and I just blew it away. So wow. I made a lot of money off the back of making them stupid. Amounts. Stupid amounts of money. <laughs> and of course, all they did was got other managers within the business saying he's earning too much. And why, you know, so they kept cutting my pay. Um, they kept changing the pay plan, moving the goalposts. Yeah, been there, done that. Yeah, you know, and and um, every time they did it, I just, the first couple of times, I dug my heels in and went out and earned more money, even though <laughs> they'd made it harder to make the money. And the, the second time they did it, I did the same, but I said, if you do it again, I'm off. Yeah. And they did. So I went and I literally walked out that day because I'd told them that's what I was going to do. And I thought, we, you know, my, my we were actually thinking of moving because I lived in Lincolnshire at the time anyway. Yeah. So my wife um, and I had been looking around tentatively with where we wanted to move to. And we moved down to the south in the end. And the one thing I found, I started looking for jobs, but actually they, they were paying the same or less money than I was earning. I was earning good money. 
and because the property we looked at was triple the price, yeah. the same kind of yeah. property, I just decided I couldn't afford to do that. So I, 24 years old, I thought, I've got no kids at this stage. I was married, but I thought, let's go for it. Let's just yeah. have a go. And that's what I did. And I Boom. tripled my income. Boom. Boom. Blimey, and I had amazing. 13 weeks holiday in my first year working for myself, where I just enjoyed some of the money that I was earning as well. So, you know, so that's kind of where it came from. And then I, it was, and there's a whole story behind, because I originally was going to be an architect. Oh, I never didn't do that because of one reason or another. And I always used to say to people, I don't know what, when I decide what I'm going to do with my life kind of thing. And it was only sort of now, now looking back, but I've grad gradually learned, not, not just now, but I realized that, you know, they, they say the universe has your back, don't they? And I realized that all along that change from, you know, going to study architecture to actually going to get a job, um, which was a really silly job at the time. I, I, I didn't even go to university. I decided not to because I didn't yeah. have a purpose to go. Yeah, so yeah. I took this job instead. But things happened and yeah. I got noticed and then I was given opportunities. Yeah. And, you know, and it's kind of, I know now that the universe was taking me along the road. Of course. I, I was driven. I wanted to achieve. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Yeah. And marketing and sales has been the common thread through everything. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I sort of started off in just direct sales. So I was literally, when I first started, just a, a, you know, a commission only salesperson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in the trenches, man. In the trenches, yeah. Oof, oof. But, but made lots of money. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So um, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome in the early days? Well, I think... It, some of the ones, some of the challenges that I see now, um, one of the biggest things I find in any business, I, when I've been networking over the years, people have often come to me in a network meeting and said, Steve, I just met somebody, Fred over there, you know, I could help him. He needs what I do and I can't make him understand. <laughs> you know, and, and I was Fred. So when I first got into my business and then, you know, do, doing the sales commission only thing was one thing. Yeah. But once I moved on and started going into um, sales and marketing consultancy yeah. and working on specific projects with different people and doing different yeah. things, yeah. you're then kind of building a business. Yeah. And I, my ego was such at the time that if something happened in the business, I felt I needed to know how to sort it out and it was down to me. Oh, so I didn't open up to other people. And um, I've been quite into personal development and going into direct sales is something I had. A, the company I went and worked for um, had a great manager. Yeah. Uh, his name was Norman, but they called him Monty because he was an ex-army guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> lovely chap. We really hit it off. And um, you know, he got me into personal development and it was only through that that i suddenly started thinking you know what am i doing yeah and i remembered the story about henry ford who said that you know i don't need to know everything i just need to have the people around me who do boom and and when you're in the trenches and everything's kind of piling in on you and things aren't working you get so stuck in that place that you you know you look up and you don't see anything you've got these blinkers on and it took me a little while to reach that point where I yeah. suddenly realised there are people out there. Was it uh, Brian Tracy was somebody I, I used to study a lot when I was uh, quite young as well. And he said, you know, none of us have enough time in our lives to make all the mistakes ourselves when we can exactly. learn from other people. <laughs> exactly. and, I, I, and that suddenly went, you know, <laughs> how sensible is that? And all of a sudden I opened up like a book and my yeah. mind opened. Yeah. Yeah, And, you know, the, the biggest challenge in any product that anybody's selling anywhere is that the biggest opportunity in the marketplace, 90% of it, they don't even think they've got a problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's how do I open their mind? And that's, what, yeah. for me, what marketing is all about. Yeah. It's how do I open the minds of people 
to get them to look at someone because if you try and sell yeah they're just resistant to of, it. of course they don't listen they switch off yeah you push them away you become a, a, a pariah yeah they don't even want to speak to you. they'll avoid you yeah you can, you know, walk across the street if they see yeah. you oh, no, down the road because they yeah. think i'm going to try and sell again yeah but it yeah. was seth godin who said lovely i love quotations so if i quote a few today i apologize but seth godin Sorry, said yeah. that you know people don't believe what you tell them they rarely believe what you show them they sometimes believe what their friends tell them but they always believe what they discover for themselves yeah and yeah. for me that's the secret of marketing it's yeah. how do i take somebody who doesn't think they've got a problem and open their mind in such a way that they discover yeah. they have a problem yeah yeah because when they discover it's un incontrovertible then you know they know they've got a problem at that point yeah you're not yeah. telling them yeah they found out but if you've helped them find out chances are they're going to come to you yeah yeah when they decide it, they it, need it, some help it, it's that it's that light bulb moment isn't it i've and i love seeing it when you can see the eyes go Ping, and they just get it um, have you heard the time that the term a bfo oh no a blinding flash of the obvious <laughs> and you're absolutely right when i'm doing my mastermind groups and workshops and things like that i can see it i can look at people and you can see yeah there's a re there's a physical reaction yeah. when something causes a penny to drop it's like, Ping. You know? oh yeah ah, yeah honestly know. it's beautiful though and, and there's nothing more powerful than that um oh, we've had a comment called hey Steph, thanks for joining us oh um boom it always Hello. starts with a problem need to offer the solution <laughs> hey Steph, thanks for joining us um yeah fantastic steve i mean um you know you, you really kind of you know anyone who's listening back will be going sitting there going oh yeah because i think one of the challenges which you, and you've, you've you've kind of mentioned it and this challenge i had was definitely that opening up and saying right i need a team um you know i need leverage i need people to like you say make the mistakes or to do the things that i don't want to do or can't do or don't want to learn how to do because i haven't got enough hours in the day so that's some really powerful advice for anybody who's listening in if you are in a position where you can get support in your business just go for it you will actually end up making more money honestly you, oh you absolutely but it, but it's a it's a it's a challenging thing and, yeah. and sometimes you know the the lessons that, that make you realize these things can be quite painful yeah yeah absolutely um my favorite question actually this is uh, tell us one thing about you steve that not many people know keep it clean keep it clean keep it clean i'm playing i'm playing um I'm, 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 i suppose when i was younger okay i used to I, I was kind of seen as being something of a bit of an artist i won't say what sort of artist but actually <laughs> no drawing i i won uh cartooning competitions various things like that and i used to draw this is when i was at school still um oh, wow and but, but what happened was and it's interesting people can really make an impact on your life yeah and that can be a really positive impact or can be a really oh, negative, negative impact. yeah yeah and i had the most appalling art teacher when i was doing my o-levels ah oh. and um they would say so what you got to do is put together half a dozen different ideas show me your ideas and they go well if you put this there and do that there and do that there and i'd say why don't you paint it then <laughs> <laughs> you know i want to make my picture yeah yeah i want to do my thing yeah, yeah i'm not here to listen to you and say do this 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 and this yeah and paint your picture yeah but you know that went on for two years and i stopped drawing stopped yeah. painting stopped doing anything well, your creativity is your creativity you can't be creative on behalf of somebody else so and and, and i think there's a massive lesson there because and i think sometimes this is why the education system does fail 
uh, some of our, of, our, of our younger members is because they, they they pigeonhole you and say it must be done like this. And look at look at where we live in that twenty first century innovation. The things that are happening now, no one would have ever dreamed of in a million years. Hey, you could you can go and stay in an apartment and um, you haven't even got to speak to anybody. It's like what you know I, I, you know innovation it, it was crushed and it's still you know they crush it in school. I had an art teacher very similar, uh, or but I couldn't draw, so when they asked me to draw, I just Tech the Mickey. Well, another story for another day. So, um, can you still do the odd cartoon? I mean, if you you know you doodle when you get time, or uh, oh, do you know I haven't for quite a long time. <gasps> Steve, I, I, I might be able to, but who knows? You should. I reckon you'd love it. You'd get back. Honestly, once you can do it, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm a great believer in that. I can remember uh, <laughs> a story when I, I went when I first went skiing. My son and I used to slalom race skiing. Um, was I'm never particularly into football or anything like that or rugby, but we skied competitively um, on dry slope predominantly. Okay, we obviously went to the mountains as well. Uh -huh. And I remember the first time I went skiing when I was eighteen, went for a week, didn't go for fourteen years, and I'd only had a week skiing. And in that week skiing, we never had. I, I couldn't, you know, it was expensive to go in those days. I was young. Uh, we didn't go to ski school. One of the guys who we went with, there were five five lads we went with. Yeah. Uh, he said, I've been before, I'll teach you. <laughs> so, so, so it's quite funny. I developed this technique of um, if I felt I was getting seriously out of, out of control, yeah. I would do a controlled crash. <laughs> so I figured that a controlled crash was much better than, you know, being out of control and crashing. So I spent the first three days getting up. Um but by the end of the week, I was getting around the mountain. So it worked. And, and then we had friends who went and moved and lived in the Pyrenees. And when my son was about six years old, so this is 14 years on, um, we went to visit them for the first time. They hadn't been there very long. And they said, let's go skiing. I said, oh, yeah, great. He said, can you ski? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was only when we were on the, on the ski lift going up to the mountain <laughs> with our gear on, he said imagine. to me, so when did you ski last? I said, oh, about 14 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the colour started to drain out of his face. And he said, um, did you ski much? I said, oh, I've been for a week. And, and, and it's like, we're just on this lift going up to the top of the mountain. And, and, and like, he went really, really quiet. And the, the, the reason I'm telling the story is, you, you remember. Yeah, yeah. So I went out. And I skied. You did your thing. Fantastic. Yeah. 14 years. I, I hadn't even doubted my ability to do it until I saw the colour drain from his cheeks and I suddenly thought, oh, I hadn't thought about it. It never occurred to me that I might not be able to ski. I think he was concerned for your safety, though. I mean, you've gone to visit him, he took his skiing, and then he's thinking, oh, my God, if he breaks his leg, I'm going to be... I, I think he was thinking he might have picked a different... Um, a different, a different chairlift slope. to go to a more gentler slope. <laughs> had oh, he fantastic. Oh, that's it's, brilliant. Oh, my yeah, God, that's it's, absolutely it's, brilliant. Uh, hi, Anna. Thanks for joining us, honey. Good to see you here. If anyone's got any questions for Steve, please ping them over. Steve, um, so, you know, we've gone through this crazy uh, time, and there's a lot of people today waking up to the fact that uh, furlough is about to end. Mm -hmm. and they may not have a job next week. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of people who are looking to start a business now. And there's going to be a lot of people who have maybe started a business, but maybe need a little bit of, need a little bit of support. What, what three bits of advice would you give anyone starting a business right now or anyone who's maybe in the early days of their business and just needs to kind of set their navigation on the right things or the things which will benefit them the most? You know, maybe share three, three of them. Okay, so three bits of advice, let me think. So first one, okay, um, I used to run workshops years ago and I, one of the questions I asked was, what is the most important skill that you have that will help you build your business? And almost invariably, people said, it's my own knowledge, skill and expertise. It isn't. For me, that's number three. Number one is marketing and mm. number two is sales. Because mm. if you can't market and find people to talk to about what you do and then convert some of those into actual paying customers, it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do. Yeah. You don't have a business. Yeah. And one thing I will tell you is that most of the best 
or the most successful organizations in terms of the volume of business they do, they are rarely the best at what they do. But what yeah. they are is very good at marketing. Marketing, yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah. so my thing would be is, you know, if you've never done marketing, don't fall into the trap of what I call hope marketing, where you don't really know what to do. You haven't really got a clear idea, but you do something in the hope that it's going to work. It's an acronym, yeah. but I won't go into it now. <laughs> um, you know, so don't fall into that um, step. Find out, learn to market. If you can't afford to pay somebody to do it, and actually, you know, one of the things I've learned is there's no point paying somebody to do it if you don't have a good enough understanding of it, Boom. because you can't give a decent brief. Boom! Love it. That is golden. That's a golden nugget that Steve's has struck there, guys. Take I, I, the I'll tell you another story. Another story. I, I met uh, networking, a, a, a lady for the first time. She came to a networking group that I was a member of, and her business was three days old. And she was all bubbly and excited and everything, you know. And she went off and we connected on social media, etc., but didn't really talk very much. Yes. Three months later, she came back to the networking group and she came back and came in and said, I've come to see you. I said, oh, that's nice. You know, she <laughs> said, I think I might need some help with my marketing. I said, why? She said, well, I've spent £9,000 on marketing in three months and I've turned over 900 what was she doing? She was um, setting up a singles group. What, what, what was so, it? What, what, what marketing was she? Did she, did she throw it all at ads? Or? Uh, yes, I'm guessing, you know, I didn't go into all of the details yeah, of everything yeah. she did, but she was doing Facebook ads, all kinds of things, setting up events, uh, mm -hmm. doing a lot of online stuff. And um, I went in and she paid me to work with her. We spent no money advertising. Yeah, yeah. And the first event that we promoted, uh, she sold 49 tickets, Boom. At £49 a head. Boom. Boom. Um, and had a very, very successful evening. Excellent. Um, and, and it was it was it was interesting because I wasn't I hadn't intended to go because it was a singles thing. Yeah, well, yeah. I was single at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a free um, ticket, sir? Was it a free ticket? <laughs> yeah, it was a Friday night. It was actually a Valentine's Day, uh -huh. Valentine's thing. And um, on the Tuesday, she said, "I've got quite a lot of girls going, but very few blokes at the moment." Oh. She says, "Can you come? <laughs> Can you come?" She said, "I know you'll be good at." You know, communicating with people and chatting and make, but making up that I might need some men in the room. And um, bizarrely, my better half, Nicola, who I'm with now, who I literally met a week earlier, turned up. On no that way. Line. No you know, way. Another story of law of attraction and things like that. Another time. But yeah, so, so, but, but anyway, the event was really successful, had a great <laughs> night and learned some lessons and, and, and moved on. But it's so easy, even if you have a budget, to spend it recklessly if you don't know what you're doing. And you can go through money just like that. Yeah, of course. Um, so, so actually, you know, it really is important. Learn about what you're doing first. Yeah. Get clear. And, and that's kind of where I like to try to, you know, if you like my entry level of where I start working with people, it's yeah. helping them learn about marketing. Yeah. It's a bit like yeah. you, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, a, 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 a business owner who understands marketing was a couple of things. Firstly, they know what they're looking for if they do then decide to outsource or spend money. Absolutely. They can, they, they can also start talking about KPIs and, and actual, rather than spending money and thinking, oh, well, what am I getting for it? If they know what the expectations are and they set that, everyone's got, they're singing off the same hymn sheet. Um, the amount of people I come across who are spending money, 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 but you know, you sit down and ask them the simple things like, well, what's your conversion rate? How many new prospects are we generating? How many conversations? Well, I've had lots of likes on Facebook. No, no, I didn't ask about your likes. <laughs> I asked about, you know, what, what's happening with this. And, um, but like you, like we both said, when they have that realization that, ah, oh, oh yeah, it just makes their life easier. It, it just makes their life easier. So, uh, People watching, I hope you've, you've tuned into that. Uh, thank you, Anna. Boom. Yes. 
to sales and marketing. He absolutely agrees with that. Now, was that was that two tips he gave us there, or, or, or did he give us like five? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that was, was, was that the first one. I think probably. <laughs> <laughs> you said marketing, sales, and then keys, skills, and knowledge. Uh, well, yeah, yes, that's true. Yes, there yeah, probably yeah. were a few in there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, do you want do you want to throw one more in just for like those those people? Anything else you want to? Uh, yeah, okay. What one of the other things that, that's uh, a challenge from the perspective of a marketing person? And that is, I have fired customers in the past, fired clients, I should say. Yeah. Um, on the basis that they come in telling me how great their product is. We market it on the basis of how great it is. And then there's all kinds of problems because basically their product or service or whatever is pretty poor ah right um right and what most people don't appreciate is that part of marketing is making sure that your product offering whatever it is is absolutely top notch and stands up yeah to you know the the critique of people out there i i had a hardwood flooring and custom made fitted furniture business for about 11 years um and one of the things that I, I learned is that sometimes when people called you to go and have a look at the, the job they've got, they'd already got some wood flooring. And I would walk in and look at it and think, God, who did this <laughs> as a professional? And I knew that when I did my job, because they think their floor's wonderful, but when I put mine in, they're going to go, shit. Who is the idiot that, that laid this? Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's what, what would happen. You would go in, do an absolutely fantastic job, and they would then see the, the, the serious flaws in the quality of what they'd already got. But they thought it was great. It's just that they didn't have anything to compare it to. And I always used to work on the basis that whatever we did as a job, we, you know, it didn't matter because customers have different levels of expectation. They don't know, they're not a professional. And I know a lot of businesses who in situations like that will kind of do half a half hearted job. They won't do the best because they're not being pushed. Whereas for me and my team, my fitting teams, I always said, listen, their friend may be the most knowledgeable, most um, picky person in the world, when it comes to wood floors knows exactly what they're looking about and they look for really high standards i want them to say wow who did this for you yeah 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 you know? and and so you know um that is really really paramount you really do need to make sure that the product or service that you're offering delivers way over what you present i'm a great believer in you know over promise Sorry, under under promise and over deliver. Not over deliver, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've I've heard that many a time. I um definitely a mantra. But I don't know if you noticed, but my 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 Zoom froze, so I actually ended up jumping from my computer to my phone. Very very. I did notice some yeah. things on the screen, Jane. I did. <laughs> so my computer's now rebooting, but uh, I did kind of think something was going to happen because it, the 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 quality started to go a little bit flaky. But I, I need a new laptop. That's what I need to invest in. Are we See, still alive, though? Yeah, yeah, we're still live. Um, absolutely fantastic, sir. I mean, you know, so thank you so much for coming on today. Um, before we go, is there anything that the people watching um, this now or on replay can do to help you now or in the future? Um, well, helping other people also helps me. So um, I run a free workshop, which I call the three Fs. It's about the fundamentals of marketing. You've been on it yourself. Fantastic, fantastic workshop. Along. And the whole idea of it is uh, it comes with my 3P promise where so there's nothing to pay. There isn't a sales pitch. I'm not trying to sell anything. And the principles that I share will only improve your marketing, providing, of course, you put them into practice. Oh, yes. Action. So, you know, if, if anybody <laughs> watching or if they know anybody who actually isn't getting the results they want from their business and they'd like to get to a little bit of grips to make sure that they've really got the fundamentals in place of their marketing. Sending them along would be an awesome thing to do because 
they get to learn. And if they go off and start getting a better result, that helps me tick the box on fulfilling my mission. Because every business that goes out there that gets better at marketing and brings more business in is more likely to succeed rather than fail. And that's what I'm trying to do is help businesses succeed. I want business owners not to come out of the business world feeling like they've had their fingers burn and had a really horrible experience, which happens to way too many. Yeah. What I want them to do is to actually reach the dreams. You know, whatever Absolutely. they came in to achieve, I want to help them, guide them there. doesn't mean to say they can't do it without me, but I guarantee they can get there quicker. And the same goes for you. So, But Boom. yes, anybody who wants to come along, you know, send them to me. Let them come along to that workshop, get to grips with some of the marketing they're doing, and it'll put them in a lot better position to get their business moving in the direction they want it to. Fantastic. Well, um, one thing you can do, which will definitely support that, Steve, if you, when we finish, can go to the video um, on the um, Facebook business page, Look South Hate Selling Facebook business page, and if you could drop, drop your links in, man, workshop event upcoming workshop website i will anything, do that i will do that anything which allows someone to get into your ecosystem a to either find out more about you or b to come and learn from you and get pick up some of that knowledge highly recommended people if, if you're watching this highly highly recommended um like steve said even if you go along you know grab the knowledge and then you don't speak to him again that's fine with him he's on a mission to help as many businesses the same as me as many businesses as possible we can't do it on our own so if we can you know if he can help you and you move forward and it's because of that workshop then he's he's achieving his dream so you know absolutely um, definitely yeah. definitely support um but steve thank you so much i'm gonna um if you just bear me one second oh, my computer. Well, i'm gonna try and jump back onto this zoom meeting on my computer and then we can okay. have a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a debrief i can't see comments or anything so if anyone else commented uh, i do apologize we, we had a bit of a technical gremlin halfway through and my computer crashed so i've had to jump on uh, on uh, my phone so uh <laughs> but still looking as lovely as ever oh thank you sir thank you. i think and still full think of energy lighting, and bubbling around the, the lighting is slightly better on my phone you see I... <laughs> well, and, and there's a well, lesson you see in how to just carry on and deal with whatever happens even when it's live absolutely i tell you what you definitely are someone who should be on stage because you, you did it seamlessly you noticed that i got a bit blurred and was carrying on as well thank you <laughs> but my, computer, <laughs> my, my, my computer is refusing to now boot up it's taking a very long time so listen we'll, we'll cut it short steve listen thank you so much for today my um, pleasure let's let, let's catch up um later this week early next week we're good to catch up with you sir and uh, people who have watched today thank you so much for joining us if you are watching on replay please do do uh, put in a hashtag replay so i know you are i'm collecting all of them from this year i'm gonna have a prize draw at christmas that's what i'm gonna do um so if you are watching hashtag replay that'd be really great steve and don't forget that i'm doing a live training with you in your uh, in your group next week as well yes yes so next wednesday guys if you're watching Steve is doing a live training in the Love Sales Hate Selling group. Um, I don't did you give it a title? I don't think you gave it a title, did you? Um no, I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's, know, let's 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 nail it now. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna well, do well. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna talk about how I look to take businesses from hope marketing to joined up marketing and how yeah. that looks. And then I'm gonna give you 10 great marketing tips. <laughs> put into practice. how does that sound well people you've heard it first i tell you what i'm telling you now if you're not in the group you need to join um if you're not in the group you need to join because that's going to be red hot uh, steve that's brilliant listen my computer is not going to play ball so what we'll do we'll call, we'll call it call it a day now we'll definitely catch okay. up in the next seven day well if not by next wednesday well thanks for joining us today go back to the Pleasure. video drop all your links in drop everything in there let, let's make sure that people can find you when they need, to, they need that support. Will do. Will do indeed. Brilliant. Thanks, Nigel, thank you very much. Great to see you. See you soon. Thank you, sir. You take care. Bye, Bye. now. Bye.